This training will walk you through how to use the Archivist Toolkit for describing archival resources. The Archivist Toolkit manages information about the archival and manuscript materials held in special collections. Click on the application icon on your desktop or Start menu to start the program. Once you have logged into the system, you can double-click on the Resources button to bring up a list of existing descriptive records. This list can be filtered or sorted to help you find a particular record. To add information to an existing record, double-click on its name. To enter a new record, press the New Record button below the menu items. A blank record form will appear in a new window. You can also create a record from an accession record by clicking the Link Resource button in that record, then Create Resource. Some of the information from your accession record will be migrated to the new resource record. At the top level, the form includes four tabs. Basic Information, Names and Subjects, Notes, etc. and Deaccessions, and Finding Aid Data. The Basic Information tab includes core data elements such as the resource title, dates, physical description, and language. It also includes links to related accession records. The Names and Subject tabs includes links to subjects and name records. This includes entries for creators of archival materials as well as linking genre, form, and other index terms. The third tab, Notes, etc., and Deaccessions, provides space for recording detailed information, including a description of the materials, terms of use, and custodial history. Finally, the Finding A Data tab is used for recording information about the description itself, including its author and publication information. While the Archivist Toolkit allows users to record a wide array of information about archival resources, in the Perry Special Collections the following fields are required. On the Basic Information tab, Level, Title, Dates, Language, Resource Identifier, Physical Description. On the Names and Subjects tab, a name link to a creator name record, links to broad and narrow CCLA subject records, and genre form subject records. On the Notes, etc. and Deaccessions tab, an appraisal note, arrangement note when necessary, biographical historical note, conditions governing access note, conditions governing use note, custodial history note, immediate source of acquisition note, language and materials note, preferred citation note, processing information note, and Scope and Content Note. And on the Finding Aid Data tab, the EADFA Unique Identifier, Finding Aid Title, Finding Aid Filing Title, Finding Aid Date, Author, Description Rules, and Language of Finding Aid. Additional information about a resource may also be entered if it applies. Now let's go through the process of entering a new resource. Again from the main screen, Click on Resources in the left-hand navigation pane. Then, to begin a new record, click on the New Record button below the Application menu items. A blank record will then appear in a new window. Users should first enter the call number created in the Archival Identifiers Generator website. The entire call number should be entered into the first field of the Resource Identifier. You should then select the Resource Level from the drop-down list. Options include Collection, Series, File, and Item. Single item and or single file collections may be entered under those level designations, while larger bodies of material will typically be entered as a collection. A title for the resource must be entered. Formatting elements should not be used when recording the title. Rules for writing titles, as well as other content guidelines, will be given in separate trainings. At least one physical description entry should then be made for the resource. To enter a physical description, click on the Add Physical Description button. A separate data entry dialog will then open. The total extent of the resource should then be entered in the containers in the Extent field, and the container type selected from the Extent Type drop-down. 
A parallel statement of extent should also be recorded in parentheses in the container summary. Clicking on the OK button will then close the dialog and return the user to the resource record window. For collections with multiple container types, additional physical descriptions may be entered. Next, you should confirm that the record is associated with the correct collecting area. If not, click on the Change Collecting Area button. Select the correct collecting area from the list in the dialog box and click OK. This should return you to the resource record window. The language of the materials in the collection should then be selected from the drop-down list. There are separate entries for multiple languages and for materials without linguistic content. Finally, at least one date needs to be entered. To add a date, click on the Add Date button. As with the Extent entry, a separate Data Entry dialog box will open. Date should be entered as a human-readable expression, as well as normalized using the ISO Date Begin and ISO Date End fields. Date Certainty, Type, Era, and Calendar may also be entered in the Date Entry dialog. Once the date information has been entered, click OK to close the dialog and return to the accession record. Turning to the Names and Subjects tab, at the top level of Description, we will link the resource record for the creators of the material. To add an existing name record to the record, click on the Add Name Link button. A Name Lookup dialog box will appear with a list of available names. Select the appropriate name and select the function Creator for the producers of the material. You may then click on the Link button to add the name to the resource record. If there are multiple creators, you may then select another name record for linking. If the creator of the materials does not yet have a name record in the Archivist Toolkit, this may be added using the Create Name button, though name record creation will be described in a separate training. Once all creators are linked to the resource record, click on the Close Window button to return to the resource record. You should also use this tab to link subjects to the record. These may include topical headings, genre form terms, occupational terms, functions, geographical locations, and uniform titles. To add these terms, use the Add Subject Link button. A subject dialog box will appear allowing you to select terms to attach to the record. Terms should be selected from the list. If a needed term is missing, it should not be added. In addition to the subjects, you may also link names as subjects when needed. This is done in the same manner as adding a creator, but you should select Subject on the Function drop-down. Switching to the Notes, Etc. and Deaccessions tab, the view is divided into two parts. To enter a note, select the desired note type from the drop-down list. A Note Entry dialog box will appear for writing a narrative note. Once you are done, click on the OK button to close the box and return to the resource record. Finally, looking at the Finding Aid Data tab, we begin by entering the unique identifier for the Finding Aid. This should be the repository code, UPB, followed by an underscore and the call number of the collection. For example, if in the Basic Information tab you had entered a resource identifier of MSS 3112, in the Finding Aid Data tab the identifier would be UPB underscore MSS3112. In the Finding A title, you should enter the phrase Register of the and the title of the collection given on the Basic Information tab. The resource record title should then be reformatted into Browse Order for the Filing Title field. The Finding A Date field records the date that the initial draft of the resource record was completed. This should be entered in the Year, Month, Day format. The name of the author of the finding aid should also be recorded in direct order. Last, the conventions used in producing the resource record should be recorded. This includes the descriptive rules used, which should be selected from the drop-down, and the language of the description. Once all of these fields have been filled out, the collection level description is complete. You should then click on the Save button at the bottom of the record. The Archivist Toolkit also allows processors to record hierarchical descriptions of collections by creating a nested, multi-level structure that represents the arrangement of the materials themselves. 
Using the navigation panel, subordinate component records can be added for each piece of the description and are displayed as in a file browser. To add a subcomponent to the current section, such as adding to a series to a collection, click on Add Child. To add another component at the same level, such as a second series under the same collection, click Add Sibling. After the required fields for the subcomponent have been completed, the order of the hierarchy can be adjusted by dragging and dropping the child records. The component records have a similar structure to the top level of the resource record and include three tabs for entering information about that segment of the collection. Basic information, names and subjects, and notes, etc. The descriptive requirements for collection components varies depending on the descriptive level of the component, with fuller descriptions at the series and subseries levels, and minimal descriptions for files and items. At a series or subseries level, the following fields are required. On the Basic Information tab, Component Level, Title, Dates, Physical Description, and Language. On the Names and Subjects tab, Creator Name Links, Subject Links, and Genre Form Terms. And on the Notes, Etc. tab, Scope and Content Notes, and Access Notes. Then, at the file and item levels, the following fields are required. On the Basic Information tab, Component Level, Title, Dates, Physical Description, and Language. On the Names and Subjects tab, Genre Form Terms, and on the Notes, Etc. tab, Access Notes, and any other notes required by applicable descriptive standards. It should be noted that in all component level descriptions, only information that is different from the next higher level of description should be entered. If you are entering additional hierarchical levels, these may also be added and the descriptive information entered. Again, please remember to consider principles of inheritance when describing subordinate components of the collection. If you have any questions, please consult your curator.